Hello, my name is Scott Golightly, and today I want to talk to you about how you can use Transact SQL to set up database mirroring. What I have here is two SQL Server Management Studio windows. The first one is open to my default instance on my SQL 2008 server, and the second one is open to a named instance called SQL 2008 SQL 08 Mirror. I'm going to open a query window on my primary server and begin setting up database mirroring. The first thing that I need to do is make sure that my database is in full recovery mode. So I will, um, from the master database, execute an alter database command and I'm going to um, mirror the pubs sample database. I'll set recovery to be full and I will execute that command. Once I've set my recovery model to full I need to back up the database so I will execute a backup database command and I'm going to back up to disk in this case I'll just put it on the C drive and after that has executed successfully then I can um, go to the mirror database and uh, I'll open a query window there and I'm going to restore that pubs database onto the new server. Uh, the one thing that I need to make sure that I do is to restore this with the no recovery option so that it's not um, completely recovered and that will allow me to mirror the changes to this server. I have to give the database that I'm restoring the same name as the original database I'll restore it from the um, location that I have the backup. I will specify with no recovery. And this will allow me to um, add additional log file dumps afterwards. And in this case, because I'm restoring it onto the same server, I have to move the files. And so I'll give it the move command. and the na logical name uh, is pubs and I want to move that to c colon backslash program let's see, yeah. program files microsoft sql server ms sql 10 dot sql 08 mirror mssql data and I will call the file name pubs underscore data dot mdf And I need to move the log file, and this is pubs underscore log to, and then to make it easier, I'm just going to copy this path and directory, and then I'll change it from pubs data to be pubs log, and I'll give it the LDF extension. So now I can execute that command on the uh, mirror database. I see that it has restored my database and in fact if I want to come over to my databases and look I can see that the pubs database exists and it's set uh, its status to be restoring.
Now I need to make sure that I have back up any log files that might uh, have been created or any changes. So I'll go back over to my primary server and I'm going to back up the log for pubs and we'll back it up to disk again uh, on the C drive and we'll call it pubs log dot back I'll execute that and once it's successfully executed I'll go back to the subscriber and on the subscriber I'll restore the log for pubs from disk is equal to c colon backslash pubs log dot back and I again need to say with no recovery and I'll execute that command. So now that my database has been backed up and restored onto the mirror server and from the the primary server I backed up the log files and restored it on the mirror server I'm ready to start setting up and configuring the database mirroring. Before I do that there's one thing that I would need to do um, and that is to make sure that if I'm actually doing this on separate servers that I've set up the logins that are necessary for this database. So if I've got domain logins or SQL Server logins that I'm using um, that I would need to have those set up on both servers. I don't need to do that in this case because the pubs database um, is just using the DBO user which uh, is mapped to the administrator user that I'm uh, logged in as on these two instances of SQL Server. So I need to um, next set up the endpoint that will be used to communicate for replication. So I'll go back to my primary server and I'll set up the endpoint there. I'll issue the create endpoint statement and I'm going to give it a name of endpoint principal. because it's the principal server in the replication. I'll set its state to started. So it will start uh, as soon as the um, SQL Server instance starts or as soon as the endpoint is created. I'll say as TCP because I want it to listen on TCP. And I'll set its listener port um, to equal 5022. And I'll set it up for database mirroring. And the role that it will have is partner. Um, if I were setting this up with a witness server, um, I could set it up with a witness role. But I'll just set that up and I'll execute that. and um, I see that one row is affected, it's returned successfully. I can actually go in the server objects to the endpoints to my database mirroring and I can see that that endpoint has been created. Now I'll need to go over on the mirror uh, instance and create an endpoint there as well. So I'll issue again the create endpoint statement and in this case I'm going to call it endpoint mirror because um, this will be the mirror uh, end to start off with state equals started as TCP center uh, listener port is going to equal and in this case I have to put it on a different port so I'll put on 5023 and this again is for database mirroring and the role will be partner.
Okay, and so now that endpoint has been created. Now I can go to either server, and since I'm already on the mirror server, I'll stay there. And I need to alter the database. So I'll alter database pubs. And in this case, I just need to set uh, partner is going to equal TCP colon um, and then I can either use the machine name or localhost or whatever but in this case I'll use the machine name SQL 2008 I'm sorry after the TCP I need the two forward slashes um, so it's TCP SQL 2008 colon and then the port that I want to connect to and so in this case it's going to be 5022 because that's the primary port and I'll execute that command and then I need to go back over to the primary server uh, and on there alter the pubs database as well to set up mirroring with it so I'll alter database pubs set partner is equal to TCP colon forward slash forward slash SQL 2008 colon 5023 and now I can execute that command if I look at my databases and uh, look at the the properties on there I see that pubs is set up as a principal database and that it's synchronized um, and I can look at the other side of that the mirror and I need to refresh this because we've viewed this before I see that pubs is mirror synchronized and that its status is still restoring because I did that last restore with the no recovery on it um, because it is restoring I can't directly access the database here um, I can't select from it, I can't do anything for it, it's just right now receiving changes. So if I go into my pubs database on the principle where I can execute commands against it, um, I can see that I have tables and we can go into our sales table and I can uh, edit data there and we see that uh, all the order dates are from 1994, let's at least bring it uh, forward 10 years and change that to be 2004. Okay, and um, again, because I can't go to the mirror to look at it right now, all I can do is um, bring up my mirroring monitor. First of all, I get uh, no witness connection because there is no witness there. If I refresh this, we'll see that they're synchronized and uh, I've noticed that a couple times where it'll come up and, and give me an error um, but uh, I don't see any errors in the error log so right now I've got uh, um, the mirroring is working correctly I can look at the history I can see the changes that occurred uh, and really I can understand what's going on with my mirroring I can also set up for warnings so if there's um, a number of unsent log files if the oldest unsent transaction exceeds some threshold um, I can set up and be notified whenever mirroring is not working uh, as I would expect it to okay so um, the other thing that I can do with the mirroring um, is I can go into my tasks uh, to the mirror and I can uh, force a failover so at this point you can see that I've got my principal my mirror set up I can pause this I can remove mirroring um, or I can uh, cause a failover which I'll do right now and what that'll do is it'll switch the roles so the, the current primary database will become the mirror and the current mirror database will become the primary database so if I click on failover I get a message that explains to me what's going to happen and specifically that 
uh, in switching over any database connections will be dropped and if I've just modified any properties in the database properties dialog box those will be lost so I need to make sure that the mirroring is up to date and, and everything is current uh, or I risk losing some data it'll ask me if I'm sure I want to fail over I'll click yes and now if I go and uh, try to execute this same statement to retrieve the data from the uh, sales table in my pubs database you'll see that I get an error saying that the, the login failed it cannot open up the database because if I refresh this you'll see that its status is mirrored synchronized and in restoring state which means I can't directly connect to and, and execute commands against it however if I go over to the previous mirror database and refresh there you'll see that it's now the principal it's synchronized and I can go into the tables and I can um, select the top rows and you'll see that the change that I made earlier has been replicated over has been mirrored over to this uh, database so mirroring is is one way that we can set up our databases to ensure higher availability so that if an error occurs that we have a copy of the database on a different server um, that would be protected from something such as a power outage or a network going down and even though I didn't set it up here we have the option to have a witness server that will communicate with both servers and do an automatic failover if one of the servers becomes unavailable so hopefully you've seen how easy it is to set up database mirroring where you just need to make sure that you set up the uh, primary database in full recovery mode set up the uh, endpoints on the databases and then make sure that through the use of backup and restore that the primary and mirror server are um, are up to date and are synchronized and then you can just alter the database to enable mirroring I'm sure you can think of many cases where database mirroring will help you to ensure high availability and to protect you from disasters.